The title today, uh, God Who Reveals Mysteries, we are in a Daniel series which uh, is coinciding with our Wednesday study. Nebuchadnezzar, a king of Babylon, invaded Judah, attacked Ju uh, Jerusalem, carried off many of the prominent young Hebrew men, and so the story really revolves around uh, Daniel and his three friends. They were trained in the customs, the religions of the, the religious pagan deities. There was a three-year program, and they were the finest and the brightest of the young Hebrew teens that were captured and held in Babylon. In Daniel chapter 2, we learn the king of this great empire in those days, Babylon, uh, had a dream, and it terrified him. Have you ever had a terrifying dream? Raise your hands. Don't be afraid. Yes, real Christians have terrifying dreams. You know, really, we do, right? We do. It happens. And you wake up. How many have a hard time, they have a difficult time for a few moments trying to figure out which is reality and which was a dream? Raise your hands. Yeah. Brenda sometimes will, we're talking early in the morning, she'll say, are you all right? I, I'm trying to come out of that dream. I'm still in a jet fighter fighting. I don't know. It's just strange. So in Daniel chapter 2, we, we learn that the, the king of Babylon has this terrifying dream, and he inquires of the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, the soothsayers or astrologers, uh, the Chaldeans, who were the, sort of the high priest or the priest who were in, in charge of the whole show. And this is where we pick up in Daniel 2.2. Two. Then the king commanded the magicians, the enchanters, the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans, uh, those uh, priests who kind of ran the show, to be summoned up to tell the king his dreams. So they came up and stood before the king. And the king said to them, I had a dream, and in my spirit, I, it was trouble to know the dream. Let me try that again. And the king said to them, I had a dream, and my spirit is troubled to know the dream. Then the Chaldeans, who were kissing up, by the way, said to the king in Aramaic, O king, live forever. Tell your servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation. That's kind of an easy thing there, really. And so what happens is, I must be past experiences, but the king says, replies to them, and this is from the Message Bible. It's a little more in the vernacular in our language. The king answers these uh, Chaldeans. He says, this is my decree. If you tell me both the dream itself and the interpretation, you're in good shape. If you can't tell me both the dream and its interpretation, I'll have you ripped to pieces. Now think about this. I'll be in good shape. I'll be ripped to pieces, right? And he continues, I'll lavish you with gifts and honors, so go to it. Tell me the dream and its interpretation. They answered, if it please your majesty, tell us the dream. We'll give you the interpretation. But the king said, I know what you're up to. You're just playing for time. You know you're up a tree. You know that if you can't tell me my dream, you're doomed. I see right through you. You're going to cook up some fancy story and confuse the issue until I change my mind. Nothing doing. First, tell me the dream, then I'll know that you're on the up and up with the interpretation and not just blowing smoke in my eyes. And this is where we pick up again. The Chaldeans answer the king and said, there is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demands. And you know, they were actually right. There is not a man on earth who can meet the king's demand, for no great and powerful king has asked such a thing of any of the magicians or the enchanters or the Chaldean, and again, these, these priests who were sort of in charge. The thing that they continue, the thing that asked, the king asked is difficult, and no one can show it to the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Because of this, the king was angry and furious 
and commanded that all the wise men of Babylon be destroyed. So the decree went out and the wise men were about to be killed. They even sought Daniel and his companions to kill them because when Daniel and his companions were brought in, they were trained for three years for these positions. But Daniel had a request of the king for just a moment or two, just a little time, to have the opportunity to interpret this dream. So Daniel went to his three friends, his fellow Hebrews, these young men, fellow exiles, and they went to the Lord in prayer. The first thing they did is they went to the Lord in prayer. Usually that's the last thing we do, right? Well, I've tried 14 things, and I guess I'll have to pray, right? The first thing they did is he went and prayed. God answered their prayers. Daniel got the interpretation. The second thing they did, after having the mystery revealed, this is important, the title, the mystery revealed, is they start praising the Lord, praising God. We read, blessed be the name of God forever and ever, to whom belong wisdom and might. And I love this. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and set up up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep things. He reveals hidden things. And this is what we're looking at today. The God who reveals deep and hidden things. Especially for us who are in the church today. And we read that after Daniel was in the presence of the king, the king declared to Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, are you, able to, uh, are you able to make known to me the dream that I have seen and interpreted? And Daniel answered the king and said, No wise men, enchanters, magicians, or astrologers can show to the king the mystery that the king has asked. But there is a God in heaven who what? Who reveals mysteries. And he, God, has made known to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what will be in the latter days. Those are times way further down in the history of the world. Your dream and the visions of your head as you lay in bed are these. To you, O king, as you laid in bed, thoughts came of what would be after this. And God, who reveals mysteries, made known to you what is to be prophecy. But as for me, this mystery has been revealed to me not because of any wisdom that I have more than all the living, but in order that the interpretation may be made known to the king and that you may know the thoughts, that you may know the thoughts of your mind. And so Daniel proceeds to give the actual dream and the interpretation of the dream, which happens to be prophecy. We'll look at this in two weeks as God, the great revealer of mysteries, reveals this dream that Nebuchadnezzar had. And if we look at Scripture, there is a uh, reoccurring theme, not just only in the Old Testament, but also in the New Testament. If we look, still stay in the Old Testament, look at uh, two of Pharaoh's, uh, uh, I want to say, uh, helpers, a cup, a cup rarer, and, and these two authors, offices, they're in jail with Joseph. And we read in in Genesis 40, they asked, uh, Joseph asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in custody in his master's house, why are your faces so downcast today? And this is their reply. They said, and we have had dreams and there is no one to interpret them. Because they think that, well, this man interprets these dreams. And Joseph said to them, "Do do not interpretations belong to God? Because God is the great revealer of mysteries. Please tell them to me. In Genesis 41, 15, we also read when Joseph is actually talking to Pharaoh himself. Pharaoh says to Joseph, I had a dream. And there was no one to, that can interpret it. 
I have heard it said that when you hear a dream, you can interpret it. And Joseph says, it is not in me. God will give Pharaoh a favorable answer. Do you see this? This continual theme? And really, from the very beginning, after the fall, there has been a series of these mysteries that God has laid out. Remember the fall, right? You remember Satan standing, well, actually the serpent we know is Satan later in Scripture. Adam and Eve standing before God. The serpent was told that the seed of the woman, that's the Messiah that would come years later, Jesus himself would destroy Satan. And God gave some information to carry out his plan, but not all of it. And so we have these, I would say, mysteries throughout the Old Testament revealed in the New Testament for us today. How, how fortunate we are. So from the garden on, God has been putting these pieces of the puzzle, the plan, one by one, not completely, not disclosing the full strategy. You know, when you, you go to a game, it could be basketball, soccer, whatever. You don't usually give your strategy away to the other team, do you? God gave just enough, piece by piece, a type of mosaic, mosaic progress, one after another, to give this truth and hope leading to salvation. And it confounded the enemy, the serpent, Satan and his host. It confused them in order that when Jesus died on the cross, they actually fell into God's plan. Because the mystery of all the ages has always been about Jesus Christ. Slowly revealed in the Old Testament, piece by piece by piece, until we see Jesus. There is this revelation and revealing about God, his plan. Slightly undercover, unknown as far as the how-to. And now for us as Christians in the New Testament, this mystery has been revealed to us. How God accomplished this salvation. And one day I return to Eden. We read about this in the New Testament. The Apostle Paul writes, now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel, the good news, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the what? The mystery, the, the revealing of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages in the past. See it? That mosaic piece by piece coming into view slowly by the time of the New Testament, by the time of Jesus coming to earth. So we, we, are in, we see the face of Jesus in all of this. Or these type of um, undiscernible threads, like on the, the backside of a tapestry, which don't make, see, they don't make a lot of sense. You see some of the colors, you may see a little pattern, but when you turn that tapestry around, that's what was happening when God was giving these mysteries. Showing his plan, but not completely. As the tapestry turns around in the New Testament and reveals Jesus Christ. In fact, Paul writes to the Corinthian church, Yet among the mature, mature we do not impart wisdom, although it is not a, it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age, who are doomed to pass away. Now, I'm going to say the rulers of this age, a lot of times we just think of human rulers, right? This is more than human rulers. These are the rulers in the heavenly realm, in context. Yet among the mature, we do not impart wisdom, although it is not a wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are doomed to pass away. But we impart a secret and his hidden wisdom of God, which God decreed before the ages for our glory. 
none of the rulers, and if I may, these spiritual rulers, evil forces in the heavenly realms, none of these rulers of this age understood this, for if they had, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. See, in the past, when these, these, these spiritual forces, evil forces in heavenly realms, when they prompted, tempted mankind to do evil things, but they're, they're the source ultimately. In the past, as God had sent prophet after prophet after prophet, they killed them, they killed them, they killed them. So they thought, well, we'll just do what we always do, and what works will kill Jesus. But it blew up right in their face. Ephesians 6 tells us, put on the armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the... Anyone? Let me read that again. Put on the full armor of God from Ephesians 6 so that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the the devil. Thank you. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms, in the heavenly places. See, had they known what God's plan was, ultimately, they would not have crucified Jesus Christ. And Jesus would not have resurrected from the dead. He would have not ascended into heaven. We we would not, in the future, be resurrected with the glorious bodies like Jesus Christ. As Jesus prepared a place for us, that would not happen. See, God's strategy was not completely disclosed. And so we have these mysteries, especially through the Old Testament scriptures. And because of it, those spiritual evil forces in the heavenly realms actually played into God's plan. And in the last days, our days, God has revealed it to us. Now, maybe we we haven't had the full experience yet. You know what I'm saying? But we know his plan. It's it's not a mystery anymore. Apostle Paul, writing to the Ephesian church, speaking about the richness of God's grace, uh, the revealing of the mystery. And in Ephesians 1, we read, this grace which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us, revealing to us the what? The mystery of his will. Revealing to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Jesus Christ. God's plan. The mystery of the gospel revealed. Ephesians also a little further down, Paul writes, When you can read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ, which was not made known to the sons of men in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. And look what we have here today. This great treasure trove of mysteries now explained. The Bible. Because God is the mystery revealer. Beautiful verse. I separated them, but it is written, What no eye has seen, nor ear heard, nor the heart of man imagined, what God has prepared for those who love him. You know, we understand the plan. We understand the mysteries that have been revealed in Jesus Christ. And yet there is that that, that moment one day, right? And I don't know, when we we get caught up in the rapture, I don't know if we leave our our number eight tennis shoes. I don't know if we leave our shoes, I don't know, here on earth. But we do know the plan. We will be with him in heaven. God is the great revealer of mysteries. Paul also spoke to the Colossian church. He wrote to the church. 
He says, uh, speaking of that church, he says, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, revealed. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to you and me. You see a pattern here? Don't you want to get home and just read your Bible? I mean, don't you? What mystery is God going to reveal to me in Jesus Christ? So we have the God who reveals ministries, especially in Jesus Christ. And in Colossians 2, verse 2 and 3, Paul writes, For the Ephesians that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the richness of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In Christ. In Colossians 4, 2, Paul wrote, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it and with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us that God may open a door for the word to declare the, what? The mystery of Christ on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. God has revealed to us in Jesus Christ the mystery of his plan. And one day there will be the fulfillment, the the appearing of Jesus Christ. It's already been revealed to us, but one day we will experience the ultimate. First John 3, 1 John 3.1 John writes See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. And what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know, because it's been revealed, that when he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is.